Hi, this is Paul with Tan Dog Studio, and today we're making a plant stand. That's right, because what better way to hold up plants than to use pieces of other dead plants? First, let's uh, get some safety gear on and keep all the gross sawdust off your body. That's that's always good. And uh, here we go. going to get started here by uh, ripping down a few boards to the uh, width of about an inch and a half wide. That's what I like. This is an old scrap piece um, from a project that I'd never really finished. So um, I'm just taking the, just really harvesting the wood that's been sitting around my garage for the past uh, 10 years or so. This, uh, this here is cherry. Um, for those of you who don't know, cherry burns really easily, but right now I'm just uh, doing some quick rips to uh, straighten up some edges. And in this shot, I'm using a push block that I copied from uh, Steve Ramsey, uh, the woodworking from Mere Mortals guy. Other wood people will understand what he's all about. And now it's time to uh, rip down an inch and a half, but on this cut, things started smelling really smoky and burny, so I abandoned the cut midway through. This is just as much about managing the temperature of your uh, cutting tools as it is about doing it safely and getting everything cut down to dimension. Now the gripper here does some funny stuff. You see it separates from uh, the workpiece tends to pull away from the fence and I'm not quite sure if that's a problem with me or my equipment. Uh, anyway, I'll figure that out eventually. The final width or thickness on my work pieces here is uh, a half an inch. Now, I ended up planing these down to just under a half an inch, which was a problem for me later on during, uh, during assembly. And that has everything to do with the cross lap joint. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. Now, I'm only showing like three or four passes through the planer on this one, the thickness planer, but uh, it, I must have gone through this, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 times. You really do want to take your time on this. And now, uh, getting these cut down to length on the cross cut sled, um, I had spent a lot of time setting up this shot and making sure that I was setting up my cut right. And because I don't have a big memory card for my camera, my camera's been a still uh, photography camera the entire time I've owned it. So I've never really needed more than, you know, 64 gigs or so. So anyway, all that to say, I ran out of space on the memory card and this is the only cross cut that I managed to capture. And you will just have to take my word for it that I finished it all. So now I want to make a mark that's uh, six inches across to, uh, to mark my dado. Uh, the dado here is for a cross lap joint between the legs, which you're looking at, and the two cross pieces. So I figure I can measure six inches up from the floor and I, uh, I marked it using uh, my fancy cool guy marking knife there. That's not really a marking knife. It's just a utility knife. And now this is the width of the cross piece, and I figure that's a good reference point or reference for uh, for marking the width of the dados I'm going to cut here. And now this is my fancy new dado uh, stack, and I figure it's time to set up a stop block so that I can have some repetitive cuts. On the cross pieces here uh, I have to put I guess these aren't dados these are rabbits on the end of my cross pieces 
that are uh, the same uh, dimensions all the way across and on both ends. So I'll do this cut four times because there are two pieces and they each have two ends, that's why. And oh, I guess I only showed it two times, but now it's time to cut the dados across the legs. Now I'm gonna cut this four times on four different legs. Now, um, I'm still learning here and the mistake I made uh, in these cuts is that I, I I tend to be exacting in my measuring and marking and I'm not accounting for the fact that uh, that you know that a lot of this is sneaking up on your final dimensions um, and so a lesson for the future for me is to cut it smaller than I think I need to, to cut it and uh, and then I'll be able to to fit it with the use of maybe a plane or a chisel I've, I'm seeing that uh, these are you're using power tools. It's it, it can be precise, but it's not, you know, it's not that precise because I'm not that precise. using a pencil to hold down that little loosey-goosey part there because uh, I don't want my fingies too close uh, on that captive side. And also um, the pencil, what it does is it keeps, uh, it keeps these, uh, these, wood, these work pieces that tend to want to bend this way or that or deflect uh, from deflecting too hard. Uh, if, you know, the tabletop is a reference surface. Now I know that side of the work piece is always flat up against the table. Now I'm using a taper jig from Rockler. I could have made one of these by hand uh, for a shop tool, but then it was on sale. So uh, the amount of time I'd spend trying to make this thing, it would be way more than if I value my time at, I don't know, $25 an hour, I would have spent three hours making this thing or I could have just paid 50 bucks like I did to buy it from Rockler. And uh, so I would have spent three hours making it and probably, you know, another 40 bucks in hardware. Uh, so $10 more than that. And I have myself a taper jig. So now I'm cutting the long taper on the long end of the, uh, of the legs. And in this shot, I'm cutting the shorter tapers. This was my first time using a taper jig and I was a little nervous about how it was gonna turn out, but it turned out really well. And I figured I'd shoot at least one pass through at 60 frames per second for some sweet slow-mo. Look at that, Ken Burns zoom, all right. Now it's uh, time to get set up for glue up. Um, nothing really special here, just a bunch of clamps and a little bit of glue and a glue bot. Uh, if you don't have a glue bot, these little bottles right here, this thing is something else. Uh, I've been kind of powering through using the bottle that my uh, Type Bond 2 or Type Bond 3 comes in and it gets to be a real pain in the neck. Uh, but using this glue bot has, uh, has really changed the way that I'm, uh, I'm able to do glue ups. Uh, I don't reckon I'm going to go back to the old way of doing it. Uh, for $8, uh, it, it's worth it. A little bit of Harbor Freight clamps here. Three bucks or four bucks, it's, it's totally worth it. Every time I visit a Hotel Foxtrot, I pick up one or two of these clamps. Okay, tidying up the sand, sandpaper from, uh, from the off-camera sanding. I, I, what I'm doing here is, I don't know why I keep the old sandpaper. I, I never end up using old sandpaper, but I'm neurotic about saving it for some reason, but 
anyway, I sanded all this stuff off, uh, off camera and, uh, here on the final fit, you'll see that I have a little bit of shimming I have to do here. So I have to shim because it's a little shy on the cross lap and then you see that it's really loose uh dados there um or uh, the, the the cross lap joints really loose and the reason why it's loose the way it is is because i milled down the thickness to just under a half an inch and the dado stack is precisely half an inch so i think in the future what i'll do is i'll mill down to just over half an inch or maybe a 32nd or a 16 inch, a 16th of an inch thicker than what I need to account for glue up and sanding. Not glue up, but sanding, definitely for sanding. And so here we go. I have made a shim out of uh, a little piece of uh, the packaging from my Forest Woodworker 2 blade, my new saw blade. Uh, previously, uh, I've been using the really cheap blade that came with my uh, Grizzly table saw. That's uh, super glue with a little bit of accelerator. Keep your fingers out of there. It'll, it'll stick. Something fierce. By the way, if your fingers ever stick uh, to super glue, uh, don't pull away. Twist. Um, it doesn't hold up very well to twisting, so that's something for no one. And now I'm just going to hold this, uh, these two pieces together with a screw. So I'm drilling, like I want to say it's like a eighth inch drill bit, a little countersink. And now I'll put this little wood screw here to hold the whole thing together. And uh, what I was surprised to learn is once I had put it all together and the shim was doing what it was supposed to do, uh, it actually took away all that play. I mean, the play's still there. I'm just holding it together with the screw. So I'll just pretend it's not a problem. Putting some parchment paper down uh, because uh, finish doesn't stick to parchment paper, so I've found. Uh, it's really helpful for glue-ups as well. And I'm using some general finish armor seal here um, because I'm being um, lazy about going and getting new finish, and this finish is fine. Uh, I've, I've used it on a, a couple, three projects, and I've enjoyed the process here of, uh, of applying this rub-on, a wipe-on poly. I, it's way too dusty in my garage for me to use anything else. And so I'm happy with these uh, wipe-on finishes. The color in the grain really comes out here. This is my wife's uh, Monstera, and it's been sitting on the floor for the past, I don't know, three or four months, and I figured it's high time to pick you up off the floor. And here's a little dog tax. That's uh, Michelle, after whom our channel is named. And thanks for watching.